Hi everyone, <laughs> welcome to Adobe Live. We are live from off in Barcelona. And uh, say smile. Yes, yeah, smile. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and then we did maybe six little ones, oh. off in Brazil, okay. off in Milan, off in Mexico, Mexico. off in Mexico, yep. off in Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Yeah. St. Petersburg, okay. yeah. maybe something else. Off maybe. veterans! <laughs> so, um, we'll talk about your work for 30 minutes, and then we will review uh, two portfolios. Okay. One portfolio will be someone actually who is at off. Uh, Anna, I saw her, she's from Russia, so she will present your work, uh, her okay. work. And then uh, someone uh, we review a portfolio of someone who is uh, in the chat actually okay, watching great. us from home. Cool. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so maybe you want to start by introducing yourself and uh, sure and, and what you do for a living. And people can see the uh, the screen they can here, see the right? Website, yeah. So okay. that's the feedback. And they can see us. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so my name is Anton. I'm on the left. So, that's, so if you that's hover me, oh. oh. If you keep hovering, he's gonna get undressed. <laughs> it's a complete nudity. Yeah. <laughs> so the one without boobs is me. Okay. And then the one with boobs, that's me. And we're both designers. And uh, our names are, my name is Irene and her name is Anton. <laughs> so that's why we called our agency like that. And basically the type of stuff that we do now is a little bit differently from the stuff we did before. Because we used to work at a place called Fantasy Interactive. Okay. Which is a big agency uh, with an office in Manhattan and also in San Francisco. We were both mm. directors there for a very long time. Uh, and then we jumped ship, okay. decided to start our own studio. And uh, that's Anton and Irene. So that's us for the past three years. We've been working at our own place. Okay. And wh where do you work from? Uh, from New York or? From Brooklyn, yes. From Brooklyn. We okay. have a space in Brooklyn right now that um, we've been in a super tiny studio. Like the moment we left, we couldn't actually, we started looking for spaces mm -hmm. and everything was way too expensive in New York. It's fucking crazy. So we were at a very tiny studio in a very weird neighborhood called Gowanus. And okay. finally in November or in October last year, we moved to a much bigger space and where we almost set up like co-op where we have a oh. lot of other creatives sitting. Oh, nice. They're not working for us. They're not our employees. They have their own projects, but we need, but we can collaborate with them. Needs, uh, like a motion designer. Yeah. So our hey. goal was to have a lot of people around us and not be responsible for their salaries. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's great. It's that's a great structure. Yeah. 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 Super efficient. <laughs> so we are live from Barcelona. By the way, people in the chat, let, let us know where you are from. It's always good to have an overview. We already saw someone. Uh, where, where you from Philippines, yeah. There was someone oh, saying, yeah. "Yeah, I'm from Philippines." Hi to Philippines. Let us know. And there is a 20 seconds delay. Okay. So when we ask a question, <laughs> it takes 20 seconds to to get the feedback. Ah, that's fine. So okay, cool. That's how it works. And don't hesitate to ask questions about uh, their studio and their work because, uh, yeah, it's a, an opportunity to to know more about uh, the creative industry and what you are yep. doing. So are there, are there questions already? Oh, it will come. It will okay. Come. Yeah. So I guess we can go through uh, our most uh, right. recent project. I yeah. mean, that might be nice. So um, we just released uh, a website for a friend of ours, Chantal Martin. Okay. Uh, this is uh, her work, actually, that she's lying on in the background. She's a pretty well-known artist oh. based in New York. And uh, we've been friends with her for quite some time. And she came to us uh, and basically said, I need to figure out a way to uh, basically have a brand around my work and myself okay. because she doesn't only do art projects, she also does a lot of commercial work where she collaborates with, for example, Puma or oh, yeah. things like that where she, you know. But just work in a different style. So it's yeah. basically she needed a brand that's not specifically, uh, everybody knows Chantel for this kind of drawing style, but yeah. she does a lot of other things that, oh. um, so she needed the brand that we developed and then on top of this brand, we actually build a, a website that uh, to allow her showcase her work in a cool way, basically. So we have people from Finland, Germany, I see Italy, Philippines, Suomi. Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Anna is asking, is it WebGL like, uh, technology to, I guess, to move this? Oops. Yeah, oh, you zoomed in. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's like a bunch of other technologies. And it's actually funny that for a very long time, we couldn't figure out exactly how we want her illustration to move. Okay. So we decided to add this uh, hidden play feature oh. where we kind of oh, expose, the we, we expose all the controllers because we couldn't decide whether we want it to be this fast or this slow. So we actually allow people to interact with it and, and play with it. And the idea was 
to make this site or at least to make this homepage look exactly like Chantel. Like it's only applicable mm -hmm. to her and no other artist and no other designer. So. And we also thought about the way that her, because it's all about her work and okay. her art. So we wanted the site to be literally as conceptually body of work. So it's her body. And then if you go into her work, you actually get closer to her body. I see. So it's the idea of body of work is basically what carried the entire concept and hinged right. everything together. Mm -hmm. um, she's extremely prolific. She does a lot of different projects. Yep. Um, so you can then go deeper and read more about each project and basically get a, a deeper understanding uh, of what all these projects entailed, how she worked on it, more photos. Uh, so really it's just a, a, a really sort of way to promote her and her work so that people can see it all in one place now rather than having to jump all over the internet <laughs> to find it. Yeah, because she awesome. had like a WordPress site before and it's oh, just, okay. uh, let's do something custom. And then you can see that the brand that we built, the, the new logo, we tried to also carry that across the entire experience, like navigation and headers and titles. So it's like super branded, it's super her, and it just works nice. And the other thing that we wanted to do, because she, she, her work is very uh, ephemeral, like a lot of it doesn't yeah. stay forever because it's on walls or inside yeah. buildings, so you don't get to see it that much. And it's very light, it's, it's kind of playful and very <laughs> loose. So we deliberately designed a brand for her that's the opposite of that. So we okay, wanted like to have a contrast, <laughs> very strong. Uh, so sense. even the typefaces that we chose and the way we chose to treat type and treat the imagery was like the complete contrast of that so that it would really sort of complement it but not compete with it because if you can imagine this is so light that it would be very hard to, to have a brand that stands out or that complements <coughs> this if it's not the complete opposite yeah yeah people in the chat they were looking for the the secret uh, hidden feature so uh, but they found it so you need to click, click on play need to click on play yeah uh, yeah so that's that's the, oh, nice, the yeah. latest project Again. Closer. We again zoom in, you see her, and then she's very well known for these three posters that she came up with. Oh. Who are you, you are you, are you you, and you can find these all over the world in stickers, posters, they're everywhere, because she's you know, quite a famous artist and people buy it and then put it all over the place. Mm. It's kind of a democratic way of uh, moving her work around. So we took that same idea of what's happening on the streets already, and then basically just do a a hashtag search for all of the stuff that's being posted oh, on the internet actually yeah. around these quotes. So oh. you keep updating it of how people so in the world are actually utilizing these, uh, these words. And also to encourage people to take pictures of uh, her work that they can see on the street posted and they'll be on the site. And conceptually, uh, the funny thing is that we actually, before, because we photographed her, uh, okay. we actually hired a studio and we ourselves kind of set everything up photograph her. So when we were coming up with ideas, we actually had two different ideas and we didn't know which one will work best. So yeah. one idea was that we're going to use photograph her from the top and then ask her to do all the drawings around it and make it interactive. Mm -hmm. So we thought that might look a little bit cheesy. We're not sure. We need plan B and we need to photograph plan B just in case this doesn't work, we can apply. Okay. So the other idea we had is that we wanted to photograph her standing in front of these three posters. So we set up everything okay. in the studio and we photographed these two images and then we started basically designing and playing around and this concept worked. But since we had this other photograph done, as always, we spent a lot of time doing our 404 pages. So we actually <laughs> used nice. that other picture with her uh, standing in front of her three most famous posters. And then we added the type, because it's you, are you, are you, you, who are you? And then there's nothing here, it's just you. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, this is probably one of the most expensive 404 pages <laughs> yeah. ever made. But it's uh, always, the point is that it's always good to have plan B. So it's basically just like we have two pictures like that that are both great. So we thought our homepage might be based on these three posters and her. And we figure out how to make it interactive and make mm -hmm. it cool. And we have the one from the the top view, but the top view was way more impressive, yeah. so we decided to stick with that. So we can move on to another project, or we can stick with this, whatever you guys want or to do. Or if you guys have any questions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you have any question on this project, don't hesitate. Uh, like the mobile stroke. It's a lot of comments, but no questions. Yeah. It's my water, <laughs> right? Yeah. That was and uh, so uh, in a project like this, you... Um, so what do you cover, like from uh, design to coding? How do you how do you collaborate to uh, to have the experience working? 
Uh, uh, so we, this is like everything you see is us. So we did all the photography, okay. we came up with the brand, we came up with the content strategy of it. Yeah. We uh, collaborated with the developers to figure out how to make that code interactive and fun and react to your mouse, which was a, lo a long yeah. process, obviously. I guess. Uh, so this whole thing took about, in total, about four months to do. Okay. And uh, in reality, you know, uh, we did the photography ourselves mm -hmm. and the art direction ourselves. So the only people that we hired or we helped us with it were the developers, developers. and there were three of them. Okay. So the whole team of this project was five mm. in total. Because um, we also build a brand new CMS from scratch. So basically Chantel oh. can log in anytime and oh, yeah. upload any type of work, yeah, news, yeah, change yeah. navigation, news, change Instagram pictures. So she has full control over content there as well. Change all the copy, whatever she basically wants. Yeah, yeah. Brent was asking what is the, the primary platform? So this is a something custom, right? Yeah, like yeah, it's all custom. Yeah. All super, custom. super custom. Yeah. Yeah. There's no platform. Um, cool, so maybe we move on to the next one? Yeah, sure. Okay. So by the way, guys, if you're interested in seeing more of our work, you can always go in here and we have all our case studies here. Um, Is, and uh, so you don't just do interactive design because this one was like a web design, web experience. You, this is not the only thing you do or this is your field of uh, expertise? It's mostly what we do, but okay, we cool. also do product and brand, but okay. mostly interactive. Most interactive, okay. Yeah. Um, so the next project we'll talk about is, um, and there's sound, so maybe we have to turn it off. I'll mute it. Uh, yeah. Actually, they will. Uh, ah, okay. Oh, he can uh, control if, if it's too, too loud. So this was a project we finished right before we finished Chantel's. We launched this uh, in December of last year. Um, and it's an interactive documentary. Uh, it took us almost two years to make uh, in between oh. our regular client work because we, we it was self-funded, so we did it all with our own money. Um, and the, the story tells the story of my childhood because I grew up in a lesbian commune in mm -hmm. Amsterdam. Uh, and for 30 years, these women have lived in this communal house. Okay. So it, I, we went to Amsterdam, we interviewed everyone, and we tried to capture the stories that uh, sort of explained 30 years of co-living um, you know, and also what it was like for us kids to grow up in this environment. Um, so on the homepage, you can see that again, we, we try to do things interactively. So I am actually, this is from a key scene in the film where they all used to have dinner together and that stopped uh, at some point and okay. the, th the story is told. Uh, so I'm looking back in time to that moment in the film where the dinners are no longer taking place yes. and that's the homepage. Uh, so everybody has left. Uh, and then when you watch the documentary, you can see like someone almost invisibly gets up, the, the chair yeah. drops, and you start to film. Um, so this project was a new experience for us because it dealt with a lot of video, uh, which is incredibly hard to do mm -hmm. well. Um, and it required a lot of thinking around how we want people to interact. So. Do we want people to just watch it? Do we want people to engage with it further? Mm. Um, how do we do it? And we hired a lot of our friends. So this is our friend Jun Kim did all the illustrations. Oh. Another friend of ours did all the animations. Uh, so we had a, a friend of ours at the sound. So as the film progresses, you can click on all of these little interactive pop-ups and basically learn more deeply about okay. the story of this house and the story of uh, yeah. communal living. And then at any point in time, you can continue the story um, and keep going, or you oh, can nice. skip ahead. Yeah. Uh, so you see snippets of interviews, there's voiceover. Um, and all in all, it was probably one of the most challenging projects we ever worked on, yeah. especially because we didn't have a client. We were our own client. <laughs> right, um, and the goal of the whole project at the end is uh, when you get to the end, which right, I will gonna, just... You have to fill in the survey. Yeah, you want to talk about that? Um, no, I mean, well, actually, it would be good if you can... Um, so, people would watch the documentary about co-living and uh, basically we talk about what people actually shared in their living environment. So, the cool thing at the very end, to make it even more interactive, we decided to build a, a very cool survey where we want to ask people what they would be willing to share if they would be living in a, oh, nice. a okay. co-living. So, for example, in here, you can select, do you want to share like a shower or like a car, groceries, uh, dinners and things like that. So we actually collect this data. So for example, <laughs> I don't mind sharing a car, right? Like I don't want to own one. Um, gas and electricity, a garden would be cool, internet, uh, cleaning would be amazing, workspace, 
uh, you know, things like that. And then I click next. Um, I can select whether I'm male or female. I can select a country. So let's type in Spain for now. And, and the range. Okay. And the range. And then in, at the end, we actually oh, nice. try in to visualize real time, we can, infographics. Uh, yeah, and re this, so this is the real time data. So if you guys yeah, at home want to fill out the survey, you will see this data change if you impact it enough anyway. And then we bring like snippets. Like we can see actually there are more women uh, who want to share things rather than men. Or like we can okay. actually show that people who are older, who are 16 and over, are willing to share more. And then people who are 17 or under are willing to share less. <laughs> like the country that wants to share more, what is the item that people want to share the most, things like that. How many people actually selected, I don't want to share absolutely nothing, which is like uh, 3%. So we actually collect this data and then it's very cool to see. Uh, and we had actually 133 36 countries. So we had people from 136 countries already filling, uh, f who filled the survey. Which is a lot, I think. It's Out a of lot. What, almost 300 countries that exist. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah. We can show more stuff. We'll just yeah. keep going. And or if you guys sure. have any questions. Yeah. Yes, everything is custom. People keep asking. Mm. We don't use any platform, so all code is custom. <laughs> uh, um... I guess another interesting thing that we can talk about is Urban Walks because that's another oh, mobile app. Uh, yeah, it's an app and it's a, another personal project that we worked on. Okay. Um, it's an app, so we can't show it, but we'll go through the case study of this instead because you have to look at it on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea behind this was to create a, a walking app of New York City, okay. but only with original content. Uh, and so, meaning we had to find writers to create original content wow. to make this app. You know, interesting and people yeah, so it's explore not like New York City. Content coming from Wikipedia. Yeah, exactly. No so no, it's something that's original, something that's new. Um, yeah, I mean, we launched it about two years ago. It's still up and running. Like people come okay. to New York, and we can we can actually follow some stats, like who is uh, visiting what places, like how many people, uh, which tours they bought. But it's basically structured by tours. Like you can see, there is a we have financial district, we have Times Square, we have mm. Central Park. So people just come, they purchase separate tours. And then they get this completely custom experience where even an entire map of Manhattan was drawn by hand from scratch, which was absolutely not Time. worth it. It <laughs> took forever. Oh. It was like freaking crazy. Sorry. It's like very sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. Like so the photography is original, so we actually... I had to jump on my bike, ride around the city, and oh. take pictures of like all the landmarks that were covering in the tour. Uh, we had to make all the illustrations. Nice. You can see here. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was also like a lot of things like we are not illustrators, so it was actually fun to try to do mm -hmm. something that's a little bit yeah. different. Yeah. Ah, and the taxi. Nice. Cool. I guess we'll show one more thing, um, and then maybe we'll open it up for questions. So if you have any ideas of asking us questions, think about it now, and we'll yep. walk through one more project. Um, which one should we show? Which one is Maybe car? Wa the watch? And we're working on it. Uniform? I think Karm, maybe. Okay. Because you guys know Karm Rashid. He's a, well, product designer, quite okay. well known. And he was actually our first client when we started our studio, which, <laughs> is, which is kind of amazing. Um, and I'll just go there now. Uh, and kind of similarly to how we work with Chantel, whoops, it's very sensitive. Uh, we wanted to be able to showcase mm. Karim's work, which is so prolific. He does so, so much work. Uh, so if you go into the menu, for example, you can see how much stuff he does, oh, even yeah. just with inside lighting, <laughs> the bazillion projects. Um, and the idea is that you just by swiping through it, you can go through all yeah. of his work, so much of it, yeah, in it a very like a huge catalog. <laughs> huge catalog of yeah. all his work. Wow. Uh, it was actually tricky to figure out like layouts and templates for them where they can upload the work. So you can see there is like one vertical and two uh, horizontal images. So you can see how 
the layout changes and all of that had to be considered in CMS when they would upload yeah. 10 different images and 10 different sizes. Like we had to automatically to calculate, figure out and put it in the grid wow. properly. So that was actually uh, an interesting challenge. That's the studio? Yep, <laughs> it looks in, crazy, right? Wow. In New York, yeah. Um, <laughs> cool, so I guess now would be a good time to maybe yep. open it up for questions. And, and you have a talk today, right? You will be on stage uh, at 4:20. Yes. Yeah. 4:20. Yeah. 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 <coughs> will you share something uh, special or something new that you unveil, or it well, will be? Well, uh, we usually talk about behind the scenes, so how we make all of all ah, of that stuff. I see. That's usually what we do. That's cool. Yep. Questions. Okay. So diverse. How do you get about finding your inspirations on your projects? That's a great question. Um, so I think the worst thing you can do as a designer is look at other design because you okay. get really influenced by that, and that's why, unfortunately, a lot of the things you see on the web are uh, very similar. Mm. And they all look the same because everybody's just looking at each other's work and copying each other's work, so it's all very homogenous. So we try to do the opposite. We never think of it as a website. We try to think of it from what is this trying to communicate. Okay. So in Chantelle's way, we wanted to make sure that she, obviously, we, the whole body of work concept yeah. was supported by all of the art direction and design. Um, and both of us go to museums a lot, we travel a lot, we go to a lot of galleries, so we have a pretty large mental library of things that we know and we like. Um, and that's really where inspiration comes from. It's, it's from other disciplines that are doing interesting things For creatively. For example, in One Shared House, uh, since uh, you know, the documentary takes place in Amsterdam, uh, we actually were looking at uh, Dutch graphic design from the 70s and from the 80s, and a lot of things that we used specifically in this uh, documentary comes from like how uh, brochures and how books were designed in Holland in the uh, end of 70s, beginning of 80s. Or you can see the work oh, of yeah. uh, Karl Martens here. Yeah. And the survey that we just showed a second ago, yeah. and you can the see at the top connection. the actual spread from one of Karl's book. Wow. You can see where the inspiration is coming from. So it's not necessarily from the site, but it's from this kind of uh, municipal forms and different like tax forms that Carl is, is using to uh, print certain things. So he takes metal pieces that he finds on the street, he put, uh, sp puts it into paint and then just puts it on different forms. So you can see that even little holes that you can see there in the corner. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they can see the mouse, right? Even the little holes like that. This is something that you can see oh, made it into our design. You can see the combination of like circles made something like yep. that or an example of this purple and this green and the 4x4 grid, you can see how it perfectly fit into this concept. So it's not one-to-one -one ripoff, but when you show it like that, like you can see exactly how it inspired. And we really wanted to kind of, people maybe, not everybody, but we wanted to somebody recognize it and say, oh, that's actually smart. You know, it's like some of the things from the Dutch graphic design are now live on the web, you know. And then uh, the same thing for the homepage which became this piece, of course, that you can see. The inspiration for this came from uh, one of my favorite photographers. His name is David LaChapelle, and he shot this portrait of Ewan McGregor years ago. Uh, so this is kind of, you can see where mm. we were inspired by him and his work, and then tried to figure out a way in a very ghetto <laughs> sort of like we build a prototype. prototype to see how it would look and what size dimension would look right with my face, and then we 3D printed uh, wow. the actual furniture. We actually designed furniture in 3D to mimic yeah. what furniture was there at the house, and then we 3D printed it. Awesome. Um, and you can actually see there's a, a quick behind the scenes video of. So here's how we made that homepage image. We literally, uh, all, our, all our whole process is pretty ghetto, so we just, brought, we just bought a uh, plastic box and then um, cut out a hole. We had done all the measurements before, so we knew exactly what size everything had to be to match my face, so we didn't have to do any post on that. Um, so was like the co-working space in Brooklyn? This one? Uh, that's our previous studio, that's so previous we one. moved, like this is summer of last year. Okay. So right after we did that project, we actually already moved to a new studio. So this is our previous one. I mean, the whole idea was like, how? what's the cheapest way to do this stuff? Yeah. And it, it should <laughs> look good, like because we, we don't have money to hire good photographers. We don't have money to like print absolutely everything, you know, hire like a set designer. Yeah. So we just want to have fun and stay out of computer for a little bit. Awesome. So this took about maybe two days. So I think one day we spent time preparing, like cutting the box, spray painting everything. 
uh, preparing, like just making sure that we have all the equipment. And then the next day we came in in the morning and we set everything up um, and then started photographing it. And then it's a, it was about three days of retouch process just to go through and clean up all the images and correct wow, the colors. Yeah. And then, of course, we had to do it eight different ways because my eyes react to the mouse, so we had to yeah, shoot it and poses. retouch it eight yeah. different times. Wow. Yep. Um, cool, so I think there's a bunch of questions now. Uh, okay. CMS for Rashid is custom and different from the CMS for Chantal. Yes, always custom, always uh, yeah. special for that project. Yeah, because the experience is so different. So from one website to another one, you... Yeah, and we, we design our CMS as well. Like yeah. We basically keep in mind how client would, at the end of the day, you know, change all the content and manage all the things yeah. on the website. So we wanted to make sure that CMS is also designed for that. So it's not WordPress or something like that. Yeah. And you, uh, you have a team of developers that you always wor yes. working with? Yeah. yeah. So yes. you, yeah. there is this trust between the... Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we do not use Adobe Muse. No. How do we divide the work? Who does what? Um, it's a bit hard to say because we... We're both designers, but we have very different strengths. So, uh, for example, I studied graphic design and Anton studied architecture, but okay. technically in our studio, I'm doing more of the architectural work and yeah. Anton does more of the graphic design side. So we're influencing each other's work a lot constantly. So normally we sit down together, we brainstorm, because we always feel that the idea is actually the most important thing and then the execution is the easy part, you know? Mm -hmm. So when we sit down, typically for a day, we come up with the idea and then try to figure out what it is that we're doing. Then we go back to our computers, uh, and normally we, um, uh, I work uh, in OmniGraffle, so I do the wireframes, the black and white okay. version of that, and then Anton works in Photoshop uh, and does the color version of that. But we always check each other's work. So yeah. we always choose, yeah, we choose this, the structure together, we choose the type together, we choose the colors together. It's not like we're separated in that way, it's just that the way we work and what we work in is, is uh, separated. <coughs> um, Sorry. And then, how do you deal with coders? Is there any limitation for getting your ideas? Our coders are awesome, uh, and they're super excited to execute on our ideas. So it's I very nice. What, what, was this about limitations? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Like, do you, do you find sometimes that, okay, you will be uh, limited yeah. by technology and... Yeah, I mean, but we basically try to involve them early on in the process. Okay. Like, for example, One Shared House had a lot of, a gazillion of technical limitations. And we basically had to find a way how to you know, what would be the best way that it would still technically work and at the same time, it's not the, the most easiest tech job. Like, this, it was still a challenge for them to make it figure out, but we also can't design something that is just impossible to build or that will take too long to build, which means it's going to be too expensive. So we had to find a compromise, and, and we always have to do it with all the projects. Canon or Nikon? Canon, always <laughs> Canon. How did your workflow change since you started as an Irene? The same. Uh, we work in the same way, except that now we do more of the hands-on work ourselves. We used to have a team of developers, uh, sorry, designers, report into us. We yeah. don't anymore. Do you perform? Wait, are you Dutch? Yes, I am. I don't know who asked that, but I am. <laughs> you can hear by my accent, probably. Uh, we don't use Dreamweaver at all. I don't think anyone has used Dreamweaver in like 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because you do all the work, photography and others. Yeah, I mean, the only Adobe products we really use are Photoshop yeah. oh, and Illust Lightroom. Ill Illustrator, yeah. After yeah. Effects. Yeah. 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 So those three are the key ones, I think. Yeah. How do you translate clients' personality into the artwork that you make? Uh, we, Anton actually has a great thing that I always repeat. That it's something that Anton always says, and that's that if you take away the logo mm. and put a different logo, it shouldn't work anymore. So it has yeah. to be so custom and so branded towards that person or towards that brand that you can't just give yeah. it to Android or you can't just give it to Google. Like, it wouldn't work anymore. So that's really how we try to approach, really understand the style of either the brand or the person we're working with and make something that is that nobody could ever steal because it wouldn't work for anybody other than Chantel or Karim or Zoom to Bell. It's actually, it's in one way, it's also it's hard to do things super, super custom that match only one brand or one personality. But on the other hand, so many designers do similar work that yeah. it actually becomes quite easy. Like you just don't do it like everybody <laughs> does, and you're already good. So we're like that. Which other Dutch designers are your inspiration? We like Wim Kral. Karel Martens. We like Karel Martens. Um, mm -hmm. Ootje Oxenaar, who, who designed the old Dutch money that is no longer uh, being used. 
So okay. it's really the, the graphic designers, the Dutch graphic designers from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, and current Dutch design that I think is great is uh, uh, the guys who recently released um, this new website called Puttertje for Maurits Huis. I forget S who did it. Super it's, uh, something, no? Super. No, they did the Rembrandt one. Yeah, so anyways. Karel okay. Martens and Wim Kral are probably our favorites. <laughs> and the I legends. Think how is it like working with Kari Murashit? He's super nice, surprisingly, he's super crazy. He's very opinionated, as you can probably imagine. Uh, but he gave us complete freedom, which was a okay. very big surprise for us. We thought he was gonna micromanage yeah. us, but basically he all. didn't see it until the day before it launched. He didn't well. want to see it. So <laughs> he gave us complete freedom, and then we were very nervous because we were like, shit, what if he doesn't like yeah. it? And then the day before it was launched, he was like, it's great, we're good. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so he was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Woo. No, I see questions uh, too. Why didn't make 3D model? Cinema 4D or for the image for the. For the why so didn't we 3D? We, yeah. That's like when we were designing that furniture, and uh, that's exactly the question that my friend asked me. Also, it's like, but then there's no point. It's like you can do everything in 3D. Yeah. Like the point was to do something manually, and basically, though you can make a super perfect 3D render. Yeah. Uh, you will never spend time outside of computer trying to do it by hand. And also, if you do things by hand, you will somehow always have that by hand touch. Like even in the final work yeah. in a photograph, you still have a feeling it was done by hand and it wasn't a regular 3D. And, and there's some limitations that I think are great about physical things, that yeah. in 3D anything is possible and I think that's almost a problem because you can make everything so perfect and you have so many options. But when you're dealing with physical things, it's you have some you, you have those yeah. limitations, that's so true. you can't do it. Yeah. So you have to just live with whatever comes out with it, and that's it. What do you? Oh, that's a great question. What do you think of Kessel's grammar? We love. We actually met him. Uh, oh. uh, yes. Last year, uh, and he. We love him. I think their work is it's Tur very in conceptual. Toronto, right? Super funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we love their work too. And uh, yes. Yeah, uh, half past two. Okay, so that's great. So okay. thanks for sharing your work. Perfect. Now we will welcome. Uh, uh, of attendee, okay, uh, Anna from Russia, and uh, she will uh, introduce you to her work and uh, if you can give some feedback or advice, you know, okay. some direction. Great. Okay, so it's time for the portfolio review. Cool, Anna. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice Hi. You. Okay, Anna. I. Uh, this is your portfolio. Yeah. On behind, so I, I let you uh, guide us through your work and. Uh, Okay. We'll chat about it. So okay. If there is a project you want to show, or maybe uh, you want to introduce yourself first. Uh, yes, my name is Anna. I'm from uh, Moscow, from Russia, and uh, my m main point uh, of interest in graphic design is uh, illustration, uh, vector illustration. I try to uh, develop it and uh, find uh, my own uh, style, and uh, wanted to show it to you and uh, hear your advices. Uh, um, okay. okay, so I think that uh, there are several of the most interesting projects. Uh, for example, uh, this is a postcard was made for Moscow Zoo. And uh, um, I didn't have any reference from the client, uh, but uh, I, uh, so I have free, mm -hmm. free what I want to do. And it's cool. a Christmas card? Uh, it's a New Year card. New, New Year, Year. Oh, yeah, because in, in Russian New Year is the, the big celebration, right? It's, it's like yeah. uh, Bigger, the biggest thing. Yeah. And it's, who was the client? The zoo? Uh, Moscow Zoo. Ah, okay. But it, it's, a, it's a rooster? Uh, yes, because uh, 2017 is the year of oh. uh, fire. Uh, in the rooster. Chinese, yeah, okay. in the Chinese uh, New Year, right? Uh, yeah, 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 I think. But uh, we also have something like associations and uh, like this is the year yeah. of uh, the rooster oh, okay. and this. And he is uh, behind of uh, the building of a set of a zoo. Ah, okay. Okay, that's, that's the architecture of the zoo here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. I think it would be great to see more. To under it's hard to understand that it's a zoo. Like, I've never seen a zoo. Like, I don't know how it the goes, first thing it would I be good to have more animals. No? Yeah, I also, the first thing I thought was, why is there a rooster in the zoo? Because roosters are in a, in a farm, no? Or they're like, never in the zoo? So that, I, that's what I thought, huh? Moscow has roosters in their zoo, yeah. like it's an exotic dogs, animal. You dogs, know? Cats. <laughs> dogs, and cats. <laughs> and I agree with Anton, I, I, I like it as an image, but I wouldn't necessarily automatically know 
that you are communicating that it's a zoo. But maybe if in Russia, and again, maybe this is a very famous building and people recognize it instantly as a zoo, then it works. So it might be that we have we don't have the, the cultural uh, Context, memory yeah. of yeah. what the building yeah. of the zoo looks like, in which case it would work. Uh, but for us, we don't know because we don't know what the building looks like. And it would be cool if you have like actual zebras and lions staring at the rooster like what the hell is <laughs> happening and then it's then it would communicate that it's a zoo and they are all surprised by what is a rooster doing at their zoo and the rooster is a uh, the symbol of the 2017 yeah like maybe the I zoo think, and the I bear i think it lacks the humor like it, it it whatever you do it it's always awesome if people look at it and they think they say wow or, or they, they say, smile or they say oh well how clever that's yeah, also like, yeah or oh. they smile like yeah. there has to be some kind of emotion from uh, from work But formally, it's very strong. Yeah. But uh, I think the concept would be stronger if it's you know more thought through. But I can see that formally, you have very strong illustration skills. Yeah, design is great. Yeah. It's just it needs yeah. an idea. Yeah. So pleasant <laughs> yeah. for me. Okay. Uh, so uh, the next uh, project uh, is um, I made for Official Voyage Russia when I was working there. Uh, for uh, the column insiders, uh, several illustrations. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, as you can see, it's about people who are traveling uh, in different places. Yeah. And uh, others are made. Uh, I draw from uh, the iconic um, places in the city, different uh, cities. Great. Yep. Those are cool. Very cool. I think it's very... What's always really hard to do with illustration is to keep it consistent. And you've done a very good job at making things that are very different, like architecture and nature, still feel and look consistent in the same style of illustration, yeah. which is really hard to do, and you did that really, really well. I think there is like one piece of feedback on the previous image I have. I mean, the one thing that's... Um, it's good to leave some free space. Like I think the only problem with those illustrations is that they're detailed and that's part of the style, which is great, but they're so detailed that sometimes you lose the sense of what's happening. I think the well, fact that there yeah. are so many details around this guy's face, like this area is gone. Like you don't recognize, like you recognize the bike and the human, mm -hmm. but this his head is completely gone. Like it's too many things. So the one thing that helps to differentiate the head here is that you have clear space here and here. So it's like you draw... But then basically the hair kind of being lost, so I would maybe remove those lines. It's like it's hard to, like also so many details that like it would be good not to have waves around your focus. Like your focus there is the person on the beach or on the sea and the, the person in the train or the restaurant. So things that are in focus should actually stay in focus. So you should actually try to remove details around that. So mm -hmm. the, And I agree with yeah. Anton to the point also that there's, a, there's no real hierarchy in where the eye goes. So it, it all has the same level, so you can't focus on one thing at once. It's like your, find, your find eye Waldo is kind of, of thing. bouncing around because there's not a clear visual hierarchy where you are helping us look here first and then there and then there. Yeah. So your eye kind of keeps bouncing around. It's a beautiful image, but it feels almost like a wallpaper or something that's very decorative that's not meant to be... Uh, absorbed yeah. uh, because the, the visual hierarchy I don't know where you want me to look first there's no yeah. way to guide the eye through these panels it's is it a story or is it should I look at him mm. you know it's my eye it gets tired of trying to figure out what it is that I'm looking at it's like a, it's, there's a lot to take in all at once so maybe even something as simple as separating the illustrations out by themselves would help and then really trying to focus you know, the storytelling. In each part. Uh, in each part. Main, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because as you say that it looks like a pattern or wallpaper, it was uh, like my aim because uh, I felt something interesting in it, like it's in one layer. Uh, no, yeah. something more important, less important, but you said that uh, you feel tight, so it's... But if, if like it is a wallpaper, then I would really go even more nuts, you know? Because mm -hmm. then... Then do like 12 of these and really put them together so it's very, so so it's like maximize it even yeah. more, you know? Like now it's in between um, wanting uh, to be a wallpaper or wanting to be focused. So if you want it to be a wallpaper, then make it a wallpaper. Like really, really go there, you know? But I think it's still like it's good to separate details. It's almost like if you would put a lot of post stamps to next to each other, it looks like a card full of post stamps, but you would actually 
recognize certain things inside each stamp. So I think that, that should be like the goal here as well. But again, very consistent, and I like that it feels, it feels, again, you're using many different, you know, types of imagery and still manage to make it feel and look like it's drawn by the, by the same hand, and that's very hard to do. Okay. Uh, maybe about this project, I just want to show how it looks in uh, the magazine. Great. Mm -hmm. So there were like, uh, it placed here, and here were uh, like uh, the icon and the city. Cool. Okay, next project. Uh, this uh, was uh, uh, um, uh, made for a company uh, which are making uh, wood, uh, wood uh, yeah. crafts, wood uh, veneer. They are making something from wood and uh, they are sailing uh, the. <laughs> um, uh, they are sailing master classes. Uh, oh, you understand to teach how, to, to, work teach how to work with the wood, and also okay. they have an event uh, for children uh, where they uh, were making uh, letters uh, from wooden pieces, mm -hmm. and it was in autumn. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's easy to understand the idea. That so it's like collage. I don't feel wood from this at all. And if I were to do this project, or I'd have to give you feedback as your art director, I would say, do it in wood. Get wood, do it in wood. See how it feels if you actually take real wood and try to make, use this as your sketch, and then make it in wood. And then you communicate already just by using the shapes and the letters in actual wood, what it is. Whereas now, you need to explain a lot to me, just verbally, but if I don't listen to you and I just look at that, I don't have the feeling of what it is that you are trying to communicate. So as an image, it's beautiful, it's very well done. It's formally very strong and very nice, but it doesn't help me understand what it is that it's communicating. So if I were to do that, or even just take a big piece of wood and try to carve the letters out, you know, mm. so it actually feels like the work that you're trying to promote. So even if I don't know anything about it, my first reaction is wood. You know, mm. I get that it's wood. And it I would be actually very cool if you use only leftovers from wood. That kids, for example, they would use wood to cut certain pieces to make letters. So there is one approach, which is a, would be a simple one, is actually make letters out of this piece of wood, like kids would, and then you photograph it and you make it. But mm. even a cooler thing would be to use leftovers to communicate that somebody came there made letters, took it with them home, and all you have is leftovers. Mm -hmm. And out of leftovers, you kind of can form or the even letters. Or you can experiment with sawdust, you know? Like the stuff that, that sort of, and maybe draw the shapes into the sawdust. So there's, I think, because wood is such a great material, if I were to get this project, I think Anton and I would just buy a bunch of wood and experiment with the wood and see what would come out of the wood, you know? Because illustration doesn't only have to be something that you draw by hand, you know, or on the computer. It can, illustration is anything that you make with your hand. So trying other materials sometimes creates new ideas, you know, that surprise you, that you wouldn't even be able to imagine. So if this would be your sketch, try to do it in seven different ways with wood. Maybe it's all, all the white space is just the sawdust. Or maybe it's the wood chips that are left that make the letters. Or maybe it's carved out of wood. There's many different things. and then. I would try all of it and just look and see what, yeah. and maybe put different lighting on it and see how it feels and which one's the most interesting. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, good advice and about contraform. Yeah, like uh, what uh, is left, it's uh, cool advice. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes you have like time, a small time, like <laughs> you have a day and uh, then you, oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> but I think in general as illustration, uh, it's very interesting to try to, even for you, for if you ever do something for yourself, try to work with other materials that is maybe uncomfortable for you, you know? Plastic, foil, wood. It's, it's interesting to try other stuff that doesn't require you to draw and see if you can still create interesting imagery that way. Because I think you're very strong formally, so that's an interesting maybe next step is to try more avenues of your expression. Okay, thank you. Cool. We have, we have for, uh, uh, one more. One more. Okay, yep. so I don't know which can be interesting. Also, uh, I uh, draw something uh, with, by my, with my hand. So 
uh, it's another style. Maybe it can be more interesting to discuss uh, project in another style. Uh, this I do uh, for myself, not for uh, client. And uh, I make uh, this uh, series uh, uh, for two, three years. And it's uh, like uh, uh, landscapes, trees, plants, uh, uh, drone with like uh, you know children's school uh, pencils uh, mm -hmm. uh, and like I like uh, this style but uh, when I try to draw uh, people in this style it looks not so attractive so it works just with the nature like uh, I also thinking about uh, impressionists who were like yeah, it feels in. very impressionist yeah. yeah yeah I think the style is interesting, but I would try to find maybe other expressions. You know, like we have such a rich visual culture as human beings that looking at something like this, I immediately think of pointillism or I think of Manet or I think of Monet. And I have already so many references of things that were already done in such, gr in such a great way that it's very hard to, to step into that world, you know, mm. because it's already been done to, to the max. It's already been explored beautifully by so many people. So maybe instead of focusing on landscape, which is what they all focused on, it might be interesting to focus on things that are modern of today's world, you know? So maybe you should actually, I would start to think about what are things that are really unique to our culture, like technology. Maybe can I do this and illustrate, I don't know, like a, a car or a phone or things that are more in our world today that the impressionists didn't have, you know? So I'm not immediately thinking of Impressionism, but I'm thinking more about, oh, you're using this style that is yours, but also remind me of Impressionism to communicate something that's happening in our culture now. I think it's, um, I mean, it also, I think the one good thing here is that it, this is done by hand, right? This is like, it's not yeah. using any software. But on the other hand, it, as Irene said, it feels like I've seen a lot of that stuff too. It's like, it's also a lot of students when they graduate, they do work like that. And I think it's, it would be cool. Like I, from all of this, I like this one the most because it looks somewhat surreal and interesting. Like it would be interesting for you to maybe try blend that other style that you're working with and now maybe try replicate something like that, but digitally or the other way around. It's like whatever you were doing there, digitally try to replicate it by hand. And that way you can actually find maybe your style or do something quite unique because this is not super unique. And the other work that you showed is also like there are similar styles here and there. I've seen a lot of illustrations that were done quite similarly to your the line tracing thing. So I think you kind of need to find like you're still looking for your style. And I think, I mean, you have a chance. Like try now blending the two things that you like. Like you're doing certain things in Illustrator, certain things here by hand. They're both not super special yet. Like no, like there is still other things that are very similar. So when people want to hire an illustrator, you have a have, have a high chance not being hired because there is a lot of other work like that. So you need to find something that maybe try to replicate what you do digitally by hand or other way around to create that one style that only you can be hired to do that work because nobody else is doing that. And another thing that I think might be interesting to try is uh, maybe if you really like a book or you really like a story that you read in the past and then try to apply this mm. style to, to tell that story of that book in one frame. Mm. You know, to really challenge, because I think, I think you have the skill, you know, the rotary skill, mm -hmm. but conceptually, you have, the, you have a moment to really push yourself. Mm -hmm. So how do you communicate with illustration is very different than illustrating something beautifully. Mm. And I think communicating with illustration is about storytelling. So if you think about maybe a movie you really liked or a book you read that you really enjoy, and take a moment of that and see how would I visualize this book in one frame, you can start to conceptualize or yeah. push your or flex your conceptual muscle a little bit, you know, and try different sketch, 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 and then apply the illustrative style. So this is like the the cherry on top, but the concept or the idea or the story is what sits yeah. underneath. Okay. Thank cool. you, Anna. Oh, thank cool. you very thank much. You for thank you. Yeah, yeah advices great. are very, very good. <laughs> uh, I understand everything, and cool. uh, I hope I will use it yeah, and good luck. Uh, yeah. make my work strong. Thank you very much. Awesome. awesome. You're so welcome. Awesome. Good luck, you, Okay. Anna. All right. And then we have one more, right? Yeah, one more. Alexandre Bequet, who is in the chat. Uh, so he, he's in the chat, but uh, like when you look at this portfolio, 
what attracts your eyes? What do you want to discover? Uh, maybe he can let us know, no? Like, what's, he can, maybe, what's the one project? So we also, don't it's click. good, you know, to... From a thumbnail perspective, you yeah, mean? I mean I, I, what, where would you jump? No? Not the one with uh, code. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, they can see this one, weird thumbnail. It looks like I'm about to learn Illustrator here. Yeah. I, I guess those are old projects, so maybe it's like we have to select from this, mm -hmm. from the top one. I mean, that looks like, what is this guy? Faces, actually, okay, let's talk about that. Faces always work, guys. There's something, there's a reason Can why yeah. magazines always has a, have a face on the cover. We as humans are super attracted <laughs> to seeing faces. So of all the thumbnails that we looked at, there's a reason why Anton Parley chose yeah. the face, the face. <laughs> because we, we are drawn to it. And unfortunately, it's one of the most boring projects <laughs> it's because it's just photography Photos. and the guy could have opened his eyes on this <laughs> one. So let's maybe go to not something that's specific to photography. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think somebody sent us a link, no? Yeah, it's for the... Maybe this one? This one, okay, this one looks cool. It's also... So he's a photographer pictures. or a designer? Yeah. Both, or both. Yeah. Or both. Okay. So it's pictures. It's in Brittany, in France. Bretagne, yeah. yeah. All right. I've, Bretagne. Been, I've been there. That's beautiful. I've been, yeah, it always rains in Bretagne. <laughs> <laughs> Great seafood, though. Yeah. Where are there photos of the seafood? <laughs> I, it's, it's hard to give feedback just on like on black and white photography. Yeah. Okay, maybe we'll go to a design project. That's like yeah. one tip I can give is like if you have one picture, two, three of. For of the same topic. Oh, only select one that you think is the best. best. It's like you photograph. Okay. Like I do a lot of photo photographs of the same item, or even the, if there are those are different uh, sculptures, just select one that kind of tells the story that's interesting. Hmm. So it's not interesting. Uh, all over so the he place. He wants us to open the first one. Apparently. Electric wire. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, that's uh, lettering. Okay, with lettering. Wires. And it says, what's the... Oh, CIA Design, I think is the, his uh, nickname or studio name. CIA, CIA Design, Design Electric, Electric wire. wire. So, okay, so it's like a poster, like lettering. Okay. I think, I mean, there's definitely some problems with actual wires. They don't look realistic enough. And the shadows are a little bit Again, off, I like think I would have experimented with real wire because it feels... Yeah not real like the shadows are wrong the lighting is wrong and it's hard to get that stuff right unless you have a good reference so yeah. even if you end up doing it in illustrator i think it would have been helpful to buy real wire make the shape like photograph, photograph it, it yeah. light wow. it in different ways and, and then try to, try to reproduce it because it feels fake you know and that's um yeah we'll uh, always it's do because that, you yeah. don't have the reference for this so it's mm. hard to make it feel real um so yeah, yeah i would have photographed like real wire yeah, the chrome is as well. Yeah, I think the references are always important. I mean, even when we have a, if we have a hand with a phone and an app, like we just always photograph it ourselves. Like even if it's on iPhone, it always works. Like you don't need to be a professional photographer to buy wire, make some loops and take a picture from the top mm -hmm. just to see how exactly shadows are going to drop just to see exactly where oh, yeah. the thickness, how the thickness is going to work and right. where be folded and stuff. this oh, yeah. shadow would go. Yeah. Should we just go to the next? Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe one, one more, and it should be time to say goodbye. Which one? This one? Brochure uh, A4. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. So this is championship. This is F4. Formula so it's like Formula One, but it's another category, I guess. F4. F4. That's like yeah. fourth category. Yeah. It's like exactly. you. <laughs> yeah. Really? Really? There's four categories. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Formula 3 for sure, so I guess there is Formula 4. Yeah. So a little strange that there's still watermark, Adobe stock. Yeah. Or it's, a, it's, or it's you, on purpose. You, you, you should license it. <laughs> no, I think it's... Uh, okay. I, I guess he didn't license the, the pre... He kept the preview. Ah, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, I mean, there's like... I think the type is needs a lot of work. Uh, type, I feel type is... You can't really... Like where you see calendar 2017 championnat de France, like there's some uh, distortion of the type hmm. that is. Uh, no, I think it's just condensed. But there are too many. Like you have this typeface, then you have H Racing, which which is a logo, but it introduces another typeface. Then you have Anthony, and I think that's the last name, no? Or yeah. into separate typefaces. I think it's just. Yeah, too typography. Much well, typography needs a lot of work, and especially in the calendar 2017, it feels like 
It's yeah. not an actually, I, mean, I don't know, it might be, but it doesn't look like a condensed type face. It feels like it's been squished. Yeah. And type needs to breathe a little bit, especially if you have it as small as you have at Championnat de France. So if you have really condensed type, it has to be, it still has to be legible. And that's a very hard thing to do when you have light yeah. condensed type. And it's time to say goodbye. Thank you, okay. my friends. It was awesome. Bye. Thanks for the feedback and your work. Good luck with the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Thank you.